Hi folks, uh, welcome to the uh, webinar and workshop series conducted by TCS in lieu of the upcoming operational case study examinations happening in February 2024. My name is Nick and I'm the lead tutor and evaluator for uh, OCS at TCS. So um, let's look at the session outcomes. Uh, first things first, I'm going to take you through examiner's comments uh, with the intention of ensuring you uh, uh, that you understand what's expected from you. And uh, in the second part of uh, today's webinar, I will be um, uh, talking about what you need to do to develop a positive uh, attitude uh, before the exam. Uh, because as you already know, you have just um, uh, four weeks at your disposal. You have just a month at your disposal uh, for your examination. So um, um, in these upcoming weeks, you have to uh, build your confidence uh, with the intention of ensuring a sure pass uh, at your OCS exam. So um, before we get into the technicalities, let me remind you about the upcoming uh, workshops. So we are done with, so with today's webinar. We, we are done with the four webinars uh, which we have scheduled for you. And uh, we are starting the uh, workshops from uh, next uh, Sunday onwards. And in these workshops, I will be uh, taking you through, um, you know, questions uh, pertaining to uh, E1, P1 and F1 syllabi with the intention of ensuring that you uh, really uh, grasp an in-depth understanding about uh, how to tackle each type of uh, syllabus area. And on top of that, uh, you know, um, as per the study plan, in the upcoming weeks, uh, you'd definitely uh, have to uh, be done with uh, at least two or three mocks. So you definitely have questions. And if you have any questions, you can raise these uh, questions and concerns uh, and get them answered then and there at these uh, workshops. Uh, mind you, uh, make uh, sure to attend these workshops live because we are not recording these workshops, although you can access the recorded versions of the webinars. We are not recording uh, the content which is covered under the workshops, primarily given the fact that uh, uh, we are uh, opening um, these workshops up for Q&A sessions. Uh, according to GDPR, uh, um, we cannot record student uh, uh, voices uh, and upload it onto YouTube or share it via a website. So because of that, we are not, uh, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, recording these workshops. So in order to benefit from it, you have to attend them live. So uh, these are happening uh, from next Sunday onwards. And in the final uh, workshop, which happens two or three days before your examination, I will highlight uh, last minute tips, which will help you to maintain a positive attitude uh, uh, right before the exam, which is crucial for success uh, with your OCS exam. All right, so um, um, let's look at examiner's comments. So. Um, uh, as per the examiner, if you are to develop good answers, you need to uh, achieve these things. You need to develop answers which are totally relevant to the requirement. So if you attended the third webinar, you would have understood what you are supposed to do uh, to really understand the requirement before you uh, develop the answer plan. So I said, with the intention of uh, clearly understanding the requirement, you are supposed to reiterate the requirement in your own words in a concise manner. So when doing it, it uh, benefits you um, um, in an extensive manner. Why? Because uh, rather than reading through two or three line uh, requirements, which takes up a lot of time, we are, you know, always when developing the answer plan, you can't refer back to the requirement which appears within your uh, scenario because it's too long. It complicates your life. So in order to uh, make things easier, I said you need to, reiterate the requirement or rephrase the requirement in your own words in a concise manner. So if you do it, if you uh, stick to this technique, which I highlighted in the third webinar, you are fulfilling this, uh, the first requirement. And the second one, it's necessary that um, you show to the examiner that you possess a higher level of technical knowledge, especially given the fact that uh, you are playing the role of a finance officer. So you are located at the lowest level of the organization. So you are involved with day-to-day uh, -day, uh, activities of the organization. So in such an um, instance, um, you're, it's as if you are receiving an email from your finance manager or some other type of manager who works within your organization. And you are supposed to assist with decision making. Uh, you are supposed to assist them with uh, providing your evaluations or 
um, if they are not too conversant with a technical area, such as something like uh, activity-based costing, they'd seek your opinion about it. So it's your role to highlight what activity-based activity, activity -based costing is and how it's going to affect the company, considering the information presented in the scenario. So a high level of weightage is uh, provided with regards to uh, testing your technical knowledge. So when developing your answers, if you do not possess the required level of technical knowledge, uh, then you cannot come up with high quality answers. So with this in mind, we have developed a set of masterclasses. So if you uh, attempt our five mock exams under exam conditions, if you keep practicing the answering and time management techniques, and once you're done with the mock exam, if you watch the masterclasses, you would fulfill this requirement as well. And just because you know your theory, you cannot pass the exam. I've mentioned uh, this previously um, uh, on the previous webinars as well. Uh, so you need to apply your theoretical knowledge considering the information presented in the scenario. So for instance, um, let's assume uh, it's a question about um, you know training and development, so which is covered under the E1 syllabus. So you know when developing your answer, you need to highlight what the training cycle is, the five steps which are uh, which we should adhere to within the uh, as per the training cycle, and on top of that. When explaining the five different elements, you have to consider the information presented in the scenario. If not, you are not going to get the full marks. So if you come up with, if you just cover theory, or if you develop a highly theoretical answer, you're not going to get full marks. You will get marks, but not full marks. Instead, when developing your answers, you need to focus on application as well. So again, as I mentioned earlier, if you uh, refer to our answer plans, and if you watch the master classes, you'd significantly improve your application skills as well. And the examiner also uh, asks us to, uh, you know, come up with well-structured answers. So that's uh, where the answer plans come in handy because I said the, the prime intention of uh, our answering technique is to spend some time to structure the answer, spend some time to plan out the answer, without straight away uh, trying to type the fully fledged answer. So most students out there, as I've mentioned in webinar number three, most students out there, they simply, after reading through the scenario, they'd start typing the fully fledged answer without spending some time to uh, think or plan out the answer. Rather than doing that, it's better to spend something like uh, 15 to 20 minutes to develop an answer plan or, or structure your answer. When structuring your answer, you can bring in theoretical knowledge. You can focus on uh, uh, application as well as uh, you can bring in information from the pre-scene uh, when and if it is necessary. So stick to our answering technique. Keep practicing the answering technique, which I've highlighted in the third webinar when attempting the five mock exams. Because uh, if you do, if you keep practicing this answering technique when attempting all five mocks, it's as if you are practicing this uh, 20 times over. So that's enough and more practice to uh, champion this technique and get it right at your exam. And uh, uh, just because you develop answer plans, you are not going to get full marks. Instead, uh, you know, utilizing the remaining 20 minutes of your time. So as you all, uh, as you are already aware, you have uh, the time allocation per task is 45 minutes. So five minutes should be allocated towards reading the scenario. 20 minutes should be allocated towards developing the answer plan and 20 minutes should be allocated towards expanding the answer plan. So when expanding the answer plan, I said that per valid point, you have to come up with a paragraph. So for instance, if there are eight valid points within your answer plan, within your fully fledged answer, you need to have eight paragraphs uh, 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 within your fully fledged answer. So you know, you are not supposed to provide answers in bullet points or in single lined sentences. Instead, you have to develop paragraphs, a paragraph per answer point. So all these things were highlighted in the third webinar. And if you keep practicing them when attempting the mock exams, you'd fulfill uh, the fourth requirement as well. And whenever you are, you know, bringing out your own argument, you have to back it up with appropriate justification. This is totally relevant to um, you know KPIs because you are supposed to, as the finance officer, you are supposed to suggest KPIs and if you attempt the five mock exams 
you'd understand how you are supposed to achieve this. So sometimes uh, uh, when developing KPIs, you have to consider some, some type of an issue within the company and with, with the intention of addressing these issues um, or fixing these issues, you have to suggest KPIs. So when suggesting KPIs, just because you, you know, mention a KPI, you won't get marks instead. You have to provide an appropriate justification. You have to argue or build an argument and say why this KPI will help the company overcome a certain issue it faces at the moment. So this can be how, um, you know, you can understand how to achieve this. Uh, what type of justifications you are supposed to provide, especially when dealing with questions pertaining to KPIs or key performance indicators, uh, you know, please go through the uh, answer plans which we have provided. And by watching the master classes, you can significantly improve uh, the validity and the weight of your arguments as well. And if you replicate a similar approach at your real exam, then you can uh, gain full marks for uh, especially uh, questions uh, which are focused on KPIs. Okay, then before the exam, what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to study all syllabus areas. So as I've mentioned previously in my previous webinars, you are not supposed to leave out any uh, uh, syllabus area. Instead, you have to be conversant with E1, P1 and F1 syllabi. And uh, the easiest way to, you know, revise all these areas uh, is to uh, attempt the five mock exams which we have developed because uh, uh, the five mocks have been uh, uh, prepared covering the entire syllabus, covering all E1, F1 and P1 related syllabus areas. And so because uh, and, and um, because of that, if you attempt the five mock exams, it's as if you are going through the entire syllabus. After the mock exams are done, if you watch the master classes, um, you can easily learn theory because the intention of developing the master classes is to teach you the logic behind each answer, um, uh, which which uh, which are covered under each and every mock exam. And whilst teaching you the logic uh, of each answer, we are teaching you theory as well as application skills. So by watching the master classes, you can easily learn theory and improve your application skills. So the examiner wants you to study all areas of the syllabus. You need not do too much. Simply watch the master classes and attempt the five mock exams. You would fulfill this requirement. And, um, you know, when developing your answers, as I mentioned earlier, the examiner wants you to, uh, you know, apply um, uh, your theoretical knowledge, considering the information presented, presented in each scenario. So as I mentioned earlier, for instance, uh, when suggesting KPIs, usually some type of an issue faced by the company will be highlighted within the scenario. So in order to address these issues, you are supposed to develop KPIs. So that's how the examiner is testing your application skills. So you need to improve your application skills. So uh, in order to improve your application skills, again, you need to attempt the five mock exams. And by watching the master classes, uh, uh, you'd learn and improve application skills. And you are supposed to practice tasks. Uh, so you are supposed to attempt mock exams as per the uh, CMA examiner. If not, uh, you do not stand a chance of passing the OCS exam. And when uh, practicing tasks, it's not uh, a matter of, uh, you know, attempting mock exams on a task by task basis. If you had seen uh, uh, the mock exams uh, in each mock, mock exam, it consists of four tasks, just like in your real examination. So at the real examination, you are supposed to sit in one place and attempt all four tasks at a stretch within three hours. However, when you are practicing mock exams, let's assume you practice mocks on a task by task basis. You do task number one today, task number two tomorrow, task number three day after tomorrow and uh, whatnot. If you're taking breaks between each task, you're not helping yourself because at the real exam, when you are supposed to attempt all four tasks together within three hours, when, however, when it comes to practicing uh, the mock exams, if you're taking breaks uh, in between tasks, if you're you know, attempting the first task, allocating 45 minutes, then taking a break and maybe attempting the second task uh, on another day, that's not gonna help you because you have to get accustomed to exam conditions. So the examiner says you are supposed to, before the exam, you are supposed to type or write full answers. So full answers, what are these full answers? Full answers mean 
that you are supposed to attempt the entire mock in one go, allocating three hours. So the best way to practice this is by uh, uh, practicing mock exams via our exam platform. As I've mentioned earlier, we have developed an exam platform which is akin to the Pearson VUE system which you would use at your real exam. So when practicing mocks, it's best to utilize uh, uh, the exam platform because there's a timer, uh, there are separate buttons uh, for you to access uh, uh, the pre seed document whilst attempting the exam as well as uh, uh, access the scratch pad. You'd have access to a calculator as well, just like in your uh, real examination. So it's better to get accustomed to these things or attempt each exam under exam conditions it's better to practice answering and time management techniques every time you attempt a mock exam rather than you know struggling at your real examination. So if you utilize our services, you would fulfill all these requirements which you're supposed to adhere to or uh, you know complete before the exam. And during the exam, what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to plan your answers. So you know if you practice the answering and time management techniques which we have uh, taught you in the third webinar when attempting the five mocks, you'd get it right at your real exam. So at the real exam, if you're supposed to plan your answers, then when attempting mock exams, you need to adhere to a similar approach. So we have taught you answering technique. If you are not too conversant about our answering and time management techniques, please uh, go through the recorded version of the third webinar where I've taught you these techniques as well as I've uh, highlighted how to um, how these uh, uh, techniques should be implemented in a practical sense uh, by taking you through the question and answer of a mini mock. And the examiner says that the mark is under strict instructions to mark answers on their merits. So as I've mentioned in the third webinar, uh, the examiner picks quality over quantity just because you write you know, lengthy answers, you are not going to get marks. Instead, you have to solely focus on what is expected from you by understanding the requirement clearly. And once you understand the requirement clearly, you are supposed to address these concerns which are highlighted in each and every requirement. So that's exactly what you are supposed to do. Um, so when uh, conducting your preparations, so if you get your answering technique right, when attempting each of the five mock exams, if you uh, you know, attempt it under exam conditions. If you keep practicing these uh, answering and time management techniques, which you have highlighted, then you would sig significantly improve the quality of your answers. If that is the case, you would be in the good books of the marker. Uh, so if you, uh, you know, practice these uh, uh, requirements as per uh, what's uh, expected from you, then you'd end up easily passing your OCS exam. And uh, let's look at the marking criteria when allocating marks, uh, two markers are involved. So, you know, the mark which you'd finally get um, is, an, is actually an average because two markers will mark your paper and both the marks will be added together and the average will determine uh, what your final mark is. Uh, this is done with the intention of uh, ensuring that there's no bias uh, when it comes to marking and there's no uh, uh, discrepancy uh, in the way in which your answer scripts are marked. And if there are uh, major differences between the marks allocated by the two markers, it will be sent to a third marker as well. So you need not worry about the uh, quality of the marking process. Uh, you know, it's handled by two individuals. And mark allocations for each subtask appears as a percentage under each requirement. So I've, you know, highlighted what this is in the third webinar answering technique. So if you had uh, already started attempting mock exams or if you had gone through the mini mock which we have shared, you would have seen that the each each uh, you know task consists of two or three subtasks and each subtask carries a weightage. So by looking at this weightage, you can determine how many marks are allocated. You'd know how to do it um, if you uh, had uh, you know attended the third webinar live or if you watched the recorded version. So um, by looking at this weightage, uh, under each and every subtask, you can determine how many marks are allocated. And based on the mark allocation, you can simply determine how many uh, answer points you need to include within your answer plan. So get these things right by learning these techniques uh, by watching the third uh, webinar answering technique. And uh, as I've uh, mentioned earlier, and as uh, um, uh, the examiner has mentioned, marks are allocated uh, 
based on merit. So the marker picks quality over quantity. So that's exactly why you need to focus on uh, developing answer plans and uh, you know championing these answer planning techniques. If you do, then um, the quality of your answers uh, will be significantly high. Okay, so that concludes the first part of uh, today's webinar. I hope you uh, gained an understanding about what the examiner is telling us and uh, what you are, what's expected from you. So before we move on to the second part of today's webinar, let me quickly tell you what we offer at TCS. So we are on the OCS page. If you are yet to check out our free content, simply click on this button, create a user account, then you'd gain access to our student dashboard. And via our student dashboard, you'd have access to the recorded versions of the four webinars, uh, the mini mock, its suggested answer, as well as the answer plan. And if you are interested in purchasing our paid content, simply click on this button and uh, check out our sample material, all different types of uh, 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 you know study material which we provide at TCS. Uh, the samples of them are included so that you can check out what you are uh, getting your hands on. Then um, um, if you are yet to join our OCS WhatsApp discussion forum, click on this button and join it uh, so that uh, uh, you'd gain, you'd have access to a tutor at all times. If you have any questions, you can raise these concerns then and there uh, within the WhatsApp group and we are happy to help you guys out. And on top of that, via the WhatsApp group, uh, um, we will be um, uh, sharing free material and we'd keep you guys uh, informed about the weekly webinars and workshops which are happening um, um, so that you can attend them live and uh, benefit uh, significantly uh, by attending them. Okay, then talking about the packages which we provide, we provide two packages uh, focused on two different sets of students. So uh, first things first, talking about the value pack. The value pack is designed for students who are coming through the SEMA general route. So if you're coming through the SEMA general route, you would have done your uh, or completed your OTQ examinations. So if you are such a student, uh, you need not learn theory because you have already done it. Because if without learning theory, you cannot pass your E1, F1, and P1 OTQ um, uh, papers, okay? So if you had uh, completed your OTQs, you know your theory, you just need to focus on improving your application skills. So focused on these type of students, we have developed the value pack. And under the value pack, you would gain access to the recordings of uh, all uh, four webinars. Then you would gain access to the five mock exams with suggested answers, as I mentioned earlier. When developing these five mock exams, we have made sure to cover the entire syllabus. And on top of that, uh, we have made sure to, um, um, you know, make them pre-seen specific. All the questions are pre-seen specific and exam standard. And you'd also gain access to pre-seen analysis videos, four videos in total. Um, so after you watch these four pre-seen analysis videos, you'd gain an in-depth understanding about what uh, the company is, its internal dynamics, its external dynamics, as well as uh, its financial performance. You'd also gain access to an annotated pre-scene. So I'll uh, quickly show you what the annotated pre-scene looks like. So, um, you know, it's the same pre-scene which you would have received from SEMA, uh, but we have uh, gone a step, taken a step further and come up with our tutor annotations with the intention of ensuring that you really understand the most important points which are highlighted within the pre-scene. So after you, if, if you uh, check out these annotations, this forms a good summary of the entire pre-scene. So rather than going through pages and pages of uh, pre-scene information and trying to you know, remember all these things, simply by referring to the annotations, you can easily understand uh, uh, the nitty gritties which are highlighted within the pre-scene document. And on top of that, uh, as part of these annotations, we have highlighted the uh, probable areas which can be tested and on top of that, probable exam scenarios which can be thrown at you um, at your real exam. So it's a good summary. It highlights uh, probable areas which can be tested and as well as syllabus areas uh, uh, tested at your exam. And um, you'd also gain access to uh, industry and financial analysis slides. So let me quickly show you what these slides are. So by going through this um, uh, set of slides uh, pertaining to um, the industry analysis, you can easily understand what happens within your chosen industry. 
uh, because we have developed these set of slides considering the real life dynamics of uh, companies which actually operate within uh, this industry. Um, so you can easily under uh, gain an understanding about uh, the industry, its competitive landscape, uh, you can understand about the trends which affect the car, affect the industry, and uh, based on these trends, scenarios will be thrown at you uh, at the real exam. So it's better to get uh, yourself accustomed with all these elements. And at the very end, real world examples of two real world companies are provided uh, in order to ensure that you really gain an understanding about what uh, uh, what type of an industry you are uh, you know dealing with so you know go through all the sample material can be accessed uh, via our website so uh, going through these things uh, uh, you uh, realize what you are getting your hands on and um, a similar type of approach is adhered to when conducting the financial analysis as well so at the very end of the pre scene you would have seen uh, the financial statements of the company so you are supposed to ask the finance officer uh, you are supposed to evaluate this uh, or analyze these uh, financial statements in order to gain an understanding about uh, uh, the financial elements of the company. So rather than you trying to do these things, uh, we have done it for you. Uh, we have, uh, you know, um, analyzed each and every financial statement. So as you can see, we have analyzed the uh, statement of profit and loss and uh, uh, highlighted the most important elements. We have kept uh, these evaluations uh, short and concise with the intention of ensuring that you uh, quickly learn and understand about the financial performance of your chosen company. So a similar approach has been adhered to when uh, evaluating the SOFP as well as the statement of cash flows. And at the end, a ratio analysis is conducted and uh, you know each ratio is evaluated in depth, yet we've kept things simple and concise with the intention of um, ensuring that you can easily understand about the financial performance of your chosen company. So you'd gain access to these material uh, if you uh, invest on the uh, value pack and you'd uh, also gain access to uh, top 10 likely issue slides which highlights the uh, uh, most probable scenarios which can be tested at your examination as well as you'd gain access to a case study familiarization kit. Uh, so if you go through this familiarization kit within 10 or 15 minutes you can easily understand about the technicalities behind the OCS exam You'd also have access to a tutor managed live chat so that you can ask your questions, raise your concerns and uh, get them answered then and there. And you'd also have access to OTQ revision cards. Although you have uh, completed your OTQ exams, they are by learning theory. It's better to uh, brush up your knowledge uh, about uh, certain theoretical elements closer to the exam. So uh, rather than going through your you know, study texts and whatnot, you can easily brush up your knowledge by going through our OTQ revision cards. So the package is priced at £199. And uh, talking about the second package, which is the premium package. So uh, this package is designed for students who are coming through the exemption route, such as FLP, and for students who had failed their OCS exam previously. So if you're coming through exemption, uh, coming through an exemption route, um, what I've uh, you know realized is most students lack an in-depth understanding uh, with regards to the theoretical elements, especially pertaining to F1 and P1 syllabi. Okay, so you might be coming through a degree program. Um, so, be, uh, so when coming through a degree program, you would be conversant with E1 related areas, but there will be extensive gaps in knowledge, particularly pertaining to management accountancy or the P1 syllabus. And uh, there could be gaps in knowledge pertaining to the F1 syllabus as well. So with the intention of ensuring that uh, you learn theory before you attempt your OCS exam, we have developed uh, uh, this uh, study program or this package. And on top of that, if you had failed in your previous attempt, since OCS is a highly technical examination, uh, if you had failed your OCS uh, exam previously, then it highlights that you lack theoretical knowledge and that you need to really learn theory. So. Focusing these two sets of students, we have uh, developed the premium package. So, you know, if you go for the premium package, it comes with uh, all material, which, uh, you know, come with the value pack. Additionally, you would have access to the online mock exam platform. So as I mentioned earlier, as per the CMA examiner, when practicing mock exams, you need to practice full mocks. You have to structure 
uh, uh, you know, your answers properly. You have to manage your time properly. So the best way to practice these things is by gaining access to our online mock exam platform, uh, which we have developed to be akin to the VUE, Pearson VUE system, which you'd use at your real exam. So this is the best way to attempt your mock exams, practice your answering and time management techniques. And if you do, you'd get it right at the real exam. You'd also gain access to one-on-one -on -one tutor feedbacks uh, for mocks three, four, and five. So the first two mocks, mocks one and two, are there to get your bearings with uh, the answering and time management technique because without practicing these answering and time management techniques, you cannot get, get them right. So the first two mocks are there to uh, for you to uh, you know really uh, practice the answering and time management techniques. And after you are conversant with uh, these uh, techniques, then from mock three onwards, you need to be serious and uh, we will be uh, providing tutor feedback. So let me quickly show you the type of feedback which we provide at TCS. So, you know, as you can see, we have uh, provided evaluations on uh, paragraph by paragraph basis, thereby highlighting what your shortcomings are. Uh, because this is the best way to, especially if you are coming through the uh, uh, through an exemption route, and especially if you had failed your uh, OCS attempt previously, you really need to understand what your shortcomings are in order to stand a chance to pass your exam. So this is the best way to understand all your shortcomings and overcome them uh, when conducting uh, your preparations so that uh, your chances of passing the OCS exam is extremely high when attempting your real exam. So throughout this answer script, as you can see, you know, we have come up with in-depth uh, evaluations uh, thereby highlighting uh, gaps in theoretical knowledge as well as application skills. Okay, and at the very end, mark allocations are provided on a subtask by subtask basis, not just mark allocations. We have also indicated the success rate. Uh, by looking at the success rate, you can easily understand the areas uh, in which your performance is substandard. And uh, in the third webinar, as well as uh, in the first webinar, I said that. Uh, after you, you know receiving tutor feedback, you are supposed to redevelop answer plans focused on the subtasks in which your performance was not up to the required level of standard. So if you look at this student's performance, this student had uh, you know gained only sixty nine marks. Um, and um, when after receiving this uh, feedback, with the intention of further improving the quality of the answers or the structure of the answers, the student need not attempt the entire mock allocate in three hours once more, because I, I consider it to be a waste of time. Instead, a student should solely focus on developing answer plans and not all answer plans. Instead, the student needs to focus on these areas or these subtasks, uh, namely uh, task two, all three subtasks under task two, uh, subtask three A and three C, and all three subtasks of task four when redeveloping answer plans. So once you're done with uh, uh, redeveloping answer plans, you are supposed to simply compare your fresh answer plan to the answer plans which we have provided and further uh, you know, figure out what your shortcomings are, uh, thereby uh, you know, standing a chance to significantly improve uh, the quality of your answer plans when conducting your preparations. And at the very end, general comments are also provided with the intention of ensuring that you really understand your shortcomings and work towards overcoming them. So that's, uh, uh, you know, the type of tutor feedback you'd receive under the premium package. And you'd also gain access to answer plans of all five mocks. No other service provider is giving you this service. Uh, you know, if you had purchased mock, uh, mock, mock exams previously, you would have seen that uh, you gain access to the mock exams and the suggested answers. However, when uh, carrying out your uh, preparations, you have to, it's prudent to summarize each answer plan or, you know, um, come up with uh, mind maps based on each answer plan. So you need not do it. You need not spend time to do it. Instead, um, you know, simply refer to the answer plans which were provided for each and every mock. Uh, this is how uh, our answer plans the, uh, look like. And... Uh, by going through these answer plans, you can easily understand the structure of the answer. As per the CMA examiner, you are supposed to come up with well-structured answers. So this is the best way to understand the type of uh, answer structures which you need to develop uh, when conducting your preparations. Uh, 
Um, and this is a good summary. This is a good mind map. You can easily learn theory as well as improve applica application skills once you go through these answer plans. And on top of that, as I mentioned earlier, after receiving tutor feedback, you are supposed to, uh, um, you know, uh, focus, uh, you know, redevelop answer plans focused on the subtasks in which your performance was substandard. And after redeveloping these answer plans, as I mentioned earlier, you are simply supposed to compare your answer plan to other answer plans and see uh, or further understand what your shortcomings are. So these are the best type of, uh, uh, you know, pre uh, preparations uh, which you need to be involved with, with the intention of significantly improving your answering technique, sig significantly improving the quality of your answers when conducting your revisions. Okay, so um, that's what you'd gain access to under the premium package. And this comes with 20 masterclasses. You'd understand uh, how uh, we are conducting our masterclasses uh, uh, if you attended uh, the third webinar, because in the third webinar, uh, you know, when taking you through the answering and time management techniques, I've actually conducted the masterclass focused on one of the elements, uh, one of the tasks highlighted within your uh, mini mock. So that, that's exactly how we are conducting each masterclass, uh, which is focused on each and every task of the five mock exams, which we have developed. So within these masterclasses, we, whilst explaining the logic of each answer, we are teaching you theory as well as application skills. And the premium package comes with a pass guarantee. So if you invest on the premium package and end up failing, you'd gain access to the premium package uh, once more in your subsequent sitting free of charge. However, you need to fulfill these three requirements. You need to complete all five mock exams because without uh, attempting all five mocks, you do not stand a chance to cover the entire syllabus. So if you are not uh, practicing uh, you know, mock exams covering the entire syllabus, you are testing your luck at the exam. Uh, so you know, you, uh, the chances of you failing is extremely high. So instead of uh, you know, taking chances, it's better to attempt all five mock exams under exam conditions thereby covering the entire syllabus. Then the solutions need to be original. Uh, I do not want you guys to go through suggested answers, uh, some students uh, with the intention of solely getting the uh, mock exam done. They'd uh, you know, copy and paste uh, the answers from, which are taken from suggested answers. If you are doing so, you are cheating yourself. There's absolutely no way of you, you know, fulfilling your re requirements fully, preparations fully, if you, are copying and pasting answers which are taken from the suggested answer. Instead, when attempting each mock exam, you need to focus on uh, the answering and time management technique which we have highlighted. You have to keep practicing it in order to get it right at the exam. So if we see that uh, you are copying answers from the uh, uh, you know solutions or the suggested answers, then you do not stand a chance to uh, claim the pass guarantee. And this comes with uh, the performance criteria uh, as well. You need to gain 40% or more for mocks 3, 4, and 5. We have stipulated this criteria, criteria with the intention of ensuring that you are serious about your preparations because, you, uh, you know, in order to mark each of your answer scripts, it takes me about one and a half to two hours. So if I'm taking one and a half to two hours, if I'm spending that amount of time to mark a paper, then you have to be serious when it comes to uh, attempting mocks three, four, and five. If you're not giving your best shot when uh, uh, you know attempting mocks three, four, and five, you do not stand a chance to pass your OCS examination. So with the intention of ensuring that you're serious about uh, uh, attempting mocks three, four, and five, we have come up with this performance criteria. So you'd actually understand that if you fulfill these requirements, uh, these three requirements, there's absolutely no way that you'd fail your OCS exam. So that's the pass guarantee, which we are providing under the premium package. So the package is priced at 649 pounds, uh, which can be paid in two installments of 324 pounds each, or else um, if um, you can save 100 pounds if you pay in full. If that's the case, uh, the price of the package is 549 pounds. So you can uh, purchase your preferred package directly via the website. And, uh, you know, you can gain access to the OCS study plan by clicking on this button. And according to the study plan, we are in week number four. So you have uh, roughly three to four weeks at your three and a half weeks rather at your disposal. So 
if you are yet to invest on um, you know mock exams uh, as well as study material you have to do it right now or else it it will be too late so you have to start preparations right, right now and by going through this uh, study plan you'd realize what you need to fulfill uh, you know before you conclude your preparations for your upcoming OCS examination so that's what we offer at TCS I hope you gained an understanding about uh, the type of services we offer having said that I'm moving on to the uh, second part of uh, today's webinar uh, so as I mentioned earlier I'll highlight what you need to do to develop a high level of confidence before the examination so first things first the best way to uh, you know uh, you know, create a high level of confidence is to stick to the study plan. So refer to webinar number one, study plan, because in the first webinar, uh, refer to the recorded version of it, because in the first webinar, I've uh, explained the study plan and I've explained what you are supposed to do on a weekly basis. Uh, so if you stick to our study plan, you need not to do too much. Uh, it's actually uh, just a matter of your real responsibility is to attempt uh, uh, the five mock exams everything else is handled by us okay so if you adhere to these guidelines which i've provided uh, under the study plan then uh, you can easily pass your ocs examination and you need to stick to a routine in the upcoming weeks uh, because uh, if not uh, um, your preparations will be all over the place i know for a fact that you are not into full-time studies most of you are not into full-time studies instead uh, you have to uh, balance your uh, corporate lives you might be running your own business and on top of that uh, uh, you have to look after your family you have, you have to look after your kids and whatnot so you know conducting you know uh, preparations for the OCS exam in the midst of all these things is not easy so in order to you know uh, create a positive mindset in order to get everything done uh, which is highlighted within our study plan you need to stick to a routine so at least in the upcoming three to four weeks, uh, try to wake up and sleep at a predetermined time, thereby sticking to a routine. And if you're finding it hard to wake up and sleep at a predetermined time, focus on your daily meal intake. Because if you, uh, you know, uh, um, get your meals on time, your breakfast, lunch, and dinner at predetermined times, then you'd fall asleep as well as wake up at a predetermined time so you know stick to a routine it will help you immensely and when practicing mock exams uh, you are supposed to practice your mocks under simulated exam conditions even if you had uh, not uh, invested on the premium uh, premium package because if you uh, do not uh, have access to the uh, if you have not invested on the premium package then you won't have access to the uh, uh, mock exam platform however even if you had gone for the value pack you can when attempting the mock exams still stick to uh, uh the time management and answering techniques which we highlighted time it every time you are attempting uh, a mock exam time your uh, preparations on a task by task basis okay so you know practice your uh, mock exams under exam conditions so you can use our mock exam platform or else if you do not have access to it when attempting the mocks on your own try to stick to uh, exam conditions as much as possible and when attempting mock exams do it in isolation because uh, at the real exam you'd sit in one place and have uh, have a go at the entire paper for three hours at a stretch so try to create a similar environment uh, when attempting each mock exam even if you are uh, uh, you know attempting the mocks on your own um, without having access to our mock exam platform and stick to the exam technique routine which i've highlighted in the third webinar so every time you are attempting um, each mock exam allocate five minutes to um, you know um, read the scenario 20 minutes to develop the answer plan and the remaining uh, 20 minutes should be allocated towards expanding the answer plan so you know on a continuous basis keep practicing these techniques and if you uh, you know, attempt all five mock exams, considering our exam technique and time management technique, you'll be practicing uh, these techniques 20 times over. That's enough and more practice which you need to uh, uh, champion it before your examination. So if you do these things before the exam, you'd achieve a higher level of confidence 
there's absolutely no point of feeling down or fearing your OCS exam. Most students are out there. Um, uh, since this is the first, uh, uh, you know, SEMA case study which you are facing, uh, students are actually afraid of the OCS exam. There's absolutely no point of being uh, afraid of the OCS exam. Instead, this is actually easy if you stick to the study plan. And when attempting each mock exam, if you attempt it under exam condition, whilst uh, uh, practicing answering and time management techniques, you can achieve uh, sure success. So that's the you know guarantee which we are providing. So keep practicing these things, have a positive, uh, 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 which will help you uh, develop a positive attitude. And if you have a positive attitude, you can easily pass your OCS exam. And um, in the upcoming three to four weeks, uh, you have to avoid these deflections because if you focus on these elements, you'd be wasting a lot of money. Time is of essence. So uh, it, it's crucial that you really focus on what's, uh, uh, um, you know, the most important, which is to attempt the five mock exams under exam conditions uh, whilst practicing answering and time management techniques. So that's your real responsibility. You need to avoid everything else. So do not go through the blue exam blueprint because it highlights uh, you know uh, the type of shortcomings faced by students uh, as well as what you need to do to overcome each of these shortcomings we have covered these elements uh, within the uh, webinar series which we have conducted so far and in uh, uh, today's webinar the examiner's comments which i highlighted were actually taken from the exam blueprint so you need not waste time to go through this uh, document extensively because it would take one or two hours of your time rather than wasting time focus on attempting mocks and uh, do not rely on any prediction because you cannot predict uh, the type of questions uh, or the scenarios which will be thrown at you uh, at your real exam you are playing the role of a finance officer and um, the SEMA examiner is trying to replicate a real life corporate environment uh, when setting up this exam so in a real life corporate environment you cannot predict the type of issues the company is facing at the moment or the type of opportunities the company is trying to exploit at the moment. So you walk into office, you open up your laptop or switch on your computer. And once you have access to emails, uh, you know, somebody might have sent you an email asking for your suggestions or your recommendations. So you're considering the information presented in the email, you have to come up with your responses. If there are certain issues highlighted within the email, you have to address these concerns, thereby provide your recommendations. Or if uh, your technical knowledge about a certain uh, theoretical concept is tested, then you have to highlight these theoretical elements as well as uh, focus on application skills. So, you know, you cannot predict what your company is going to face in the future. So um, in a real uh, corporate environment, you cannot predict what any company is going to face tomorrow. So in such an environment, there's absolutely no point of trying to focus on predictions. Instead, focus on what's important, which is to attempt the five mock exams. And excessive industry analysis is a killer because uh, if you try to uh, you know, analyze the industry too much, you'd be wasting a lot of time. Um, and especially given the fact that you are the finance officer, you are at the lowest level of the organization. So as an individual who is involved with the day-to-day -day running of the company, you are not involved with decision making. Instead, you are assisting decision makers. So if you are not involved with decision making, there's absolutely no point of you conducting excessive industry analysis. Simply go through the industry analysis slides um, which we have developed for you. Then you'd gain an understanding about what your industry is. Uh, other than that, there's absolutely no point of trying to understand uh, the uh, technicalities behind your industry. Uh, because that's not uh, that does not come under your purview. You are at the lowest level of the organization. If you are involved with decision making, yes, you have to be conversant about industry dynamics. So your industry knowledge will be tested at the MCS and SCS exams. Industry knowledge will be heavily tested at the SCS exam, but at the OCS exam, your industry knowledge is not tested. Why? Because you are not involved with decision making. Instead, you are uh, um, you know, uh, involved with implementing decisions which are arrived at by management level employees as well as employees at the strategic level. So simply go through the set of slides which you have prepared, which would take just 10 to 15 minutes of your time. 
that's uh, you know the type of uh, knowledge you need to possess about the industry nothing else and misguided use of past papers is a killer uh, some students uh, think that um, you can refer to past exam variants and by doing that gain an understanding about the type of uh, questions which will be thrown at you at your real exam uh, you know you have to forget about this because there's absolutely no point of uh, looking at past exam variants or past papers simply given the fact that these past variants are based on different precincts or different companies so if you are going through a question which is relevant for a totally different industry totally different company uh, which is based on totally different financial statements uh, you are not um, conducting your preparations in the most uh, you know um, um, a successful manner instead it's uh, prudent to focus your attention towards exam standard and pre-seen relevant mock exams. So, you know, if you're trying to go through past papers and uh, focus on the suggested answers prepared uh, for each, uh, you know, past paper, you are, you'd be wasting your time. Instead, you should focus on attempting the five mock exams uh, which we have prepared. And information overload is a killer. So rather than doing all these things or trying to you know predict what's going to be uh, wh wh what type of uh, uh, you know scenarios you would face at the exam uh, rather than trying to go through your uh, study texts study notes and whatnot simply focus your attention towards attempting the mock exams especially given the fact that you do not have enough time um, um, so uh, focus on attempting mock exams and if you really want to improve your uh, theoretical knowledge and application skills simply refer to the answer plans which were provided and watch the master classes if you do you can get everything done uh, in a jiffy within a short period of time so and on top of that uh, you might be attempting the exam at home uh, rather than at uh, um, an exam center so if that is the case uh, please uh, go to this link and uh, get your um, um, bearings with the SEMA exam platform which you'd uh, use at your real exam so you have to uh, get thorough with uh, this exam platform and uh, you need to read through some uh, you know information about the exam platform about uh, uh, the type of environment in which you are supposed to attempt your exam real exam at home so go through uh, this information way before the exam rather than waiting until the last moment get accustomed to the exam platform, uh, um, you know, two or three weeks before the exam. So simply click on this link and uh, access it. I'll share this link via uh, the WhatsApp group so that you can access it and um, get the ball rolling. Okay. So, uh, you know, we are happy to say uh, we collated uh, the results for the November sitting and we achieved an 89% pass rate. And, uh, you know, as, as you can see, uh, this student Laxon uh, from Zimbabwe uh, was uh, able to achieve 117 marks. Uh, how did this individual achieve uh, this type of uh, uh, mark? Simply by sticking to our study plan and uh, you know solely focusing on uh, attempting the mock exam. So if you uh, you know utilize our resources, your responsibility to re responsibility is to attempt the five mock exams everything else is handled by us so when the pass mark is just 80 this student achieved 117 simply given the fact that this uh, individual was solely focused on attempting mock exams under exam conditions whilst uh, practicing answering and time management techniques so you can achieve a similar feat if you um, you know adhere to the guidance which we have provided and we have uh, you know produced some uh, rankers uh, um, in the previous year, in the year 2022 as well. Um, and um, I, I do not know whether this student will achieve a rank as well. Uh, surely, uh, this individual will have a rank. Uh, we are yet to receive word from SEMA about it. Um, so if, if you utilize our resources and stick to the study plan, if you solely focus on attempting the mock exams, uh, you can achieve a similar result. Okay, any questions, folks? Uh, so we have... Um, fulfilled the uh, the uh, areas which i was supposed to cover under today's webinar any questions you would have started attempting your mock exams if that is the case you might have uh, 
uh, questions, encountered issues. Uh, if uh, if so, please raise your concerns so that I can address um, all these concerns. I'm going to pause the recording. All right. Thank you for those questions. So, um, you know, having addressed those concerns, uh, let me, uh, you know, uh, finish the session. So before I finish the session, I'll, uh, you know, remind you as to how you can contact us. You can contact us via our website, which is www.studyattcs.com, or you can drop us an email via info at studyattcs.com, or simply message us via WhatsApp uh, uh, via 7898464196. And I invite you guys to follow us on our social media handles. Uh, you know, the recorded versions of these webinars are uploaded onto our YouTube channel. So please uh, make sure to go subscribe our YouTube channel. And on top of that, uh, uh, you know, please uh, follow us on TikTok as well because uh, uh, we have uploaded uh, three mind maps which are focused on the entire pre scene. So we have highlighted within these mind maps, we have highlighted the most important uh, uh, information which is highlighted within uh, the pre scene document. So rather than you trying to, uh, um, you know, memorize the most important information, uh, you can simply refer to these uh, three TikTok videos on a daily basis, which should take just uh, six to seven minutes of your time. So on a daily basis, if you keep watching these three TikToks, uh, then uh, you'd uh, constantly keep reminding yourself about the most important points uh, highlighted within the pre-scene, then your life becomes extremely easy at your real exam. So go follow us on TikTok and keep watching these three TikTok videos. Uh, so having said that, it brings us to the webinar series. Uh, and from next week onwards, uh, the workshops are happening and uh, as i mentioned earlier these workshops will not be recorded so i invite you guys to you know you know make time and attend them live uh, without fail so thank you very much um i'll see you next week and all the very best